Hello there, it's me, Sari, here again. And I know you must be sick and tired of me showing you all the things that I fancy and buy and then tease you with. Well, I just can't help myself, nor can I? So, I went to a shop today and I bought a lot, a lot of wonderful goodies. And it's a good thing I went to the flea market this weekend so I could actually get some cash. Well, let's get started anyway. Here's a wonderful owl stamp sitting on a pile of books. I hope you can see him better there. Whoops, sorry. So I hope you can see him there. It's a bit tricky, you can't always see how well you see the picture unless I stop the film. Well, here it is anyway, Stampenders. It's a wonderful owl there. Kling Literary Owl, it's called. And here is a wonderful stamp from Kaisercraft. It's a postal stamp with lots of postmark stamps. And I'm sure you can use just half of it on some pages or just use the other half on the other side if you want to go for a tag or something. You could even go for the upper part or the lower part. So I think this is a perfect stamp. And with the Eiffel Tower there also, it's making it so much more the cuter. And you know, I love London and I would absolutely love to go there yet once more. So I had to buy this. So I'm thinking perhaps this one could be in the front of my London book because I did go there last year. And here are some small black and white stickers from Tim Holtz. There are, could there be perhaps eight pages, 900 stickers all in all from A to Z and the numbers as well, of course. So it's a nice thing you could actually get started using your different things and these look like the letters from a Dymo machine now don't they? And talking about letters, actually I'm going to show you these two stamps. These are pretty handy because they aren't that expensive. I'm thinking perhaps a tops five or six dollars. So it isn't that much is it? Because you have all let's see if I can twist it over. You have all these different sayings and you could also put in the date, of course. And it dates from 2007 to 2018. And I, I think that will last me for a long time, really. And then there's another one. This one is from Studio Calico. And I think that both of these are sort of in the journal journey theme. And they will go well with the other two that I've got since before because the first one I saw actually for the same price even was the smash one and this one says smashed stolen oh snap I love this and also so what I like about these is that the stamps are pretty small so you can actually fit them almost anywhere and here is another one which I actually found in a store called Granit here in Gothenburg and this one says name, copy, to do, from me and so forth. So it's a different kind of stamp, but it's still the same sort of stamp. So let's things let, let's keep things organized here. I bought myself two packs of mold and pour. And this is a quick set custom mold thingy. So which means that you're going to take equal parts of each clay combine them together and into a bowl and then you can just put in perhaps a cog wheel or something out of metal let that sit there for five minutes or something pull it out and then you've got your own custom made mold and then you can actually put in clay even melted UT I mean these are actually made for that melting pot and the UT thing really you can see the picture there even but I haven't got a melting pot yet, so I need to find a different way to make use of these. And I'm sure you could use some uh, paper clay or perhaps even clay that dries overnight and such, just to make your own custom mould thingies. The drawback, of course, being that these are pretty expensive. I mean, I'm thinking perhaps 10 to, 10 to 13 dollars, perhaps. And this that doesn't last long because you can't make that big balls out of these now, can you? So I was hoping, I would, I would like to get those a bit cheaper somewhere, but I didn't. I would just have to get them today. Here's a new set of stamps from Bow Bunny. And you know, I always go mad when I see some film strip things. And these are pretty small when I compare them to other stamps that I've got. And I'm thinking that perhaps you could even put your letter stamping here with your alphabet or something. 
here's a small camera around here so also that's saying oh snap here's some kind of a meter or circular thingy there and then there's a wonderful corner thingy this one wasn't expensive so i just had to get it then we come to the kaiser craft play thingy this one says Sears and Son. I don't know why. I just got, don't get it really. I bought this one for that car, but the mustache is also pretty nice, isn't it? And that uh, hand of card there, cards there is also quite nice. A bicycle. It's actually a three wheeled bicycle, I see now. It's a fun thing. And also that vintage looking clock there. And then you know, I love cog wheels. And I just start to wonder, comparing these two, equal in size, one costs 59 crowns and the other one costs 149. Or if I take these two, it's the same brand, but there's a difference in price. So I can't get it why these cost 100 crowns more. It's amazing, isn't it? So I'm thinking there's an 8 to $10 difference between these two. I mean, they're both out of polymer clay or whatever. Just don't get it. Well, since I like the motifs, I still buy them. So I'm the loser, eh? And, uh, well, here are two travel sets. Aeroplanes, luggage, different kinds of postage stamps and whatever. And let's see, the other one. One is called baggage claim. This is the one. And the other one is called Air Travel, and that's the one with the aeroplanes, of course. And the one with the cogs is called Steampunk Gears. So, let's see what more fun I couldn't resist buying. This is something. It's a world map, and I like this size, really. So I'm hoping I'll be able to use this. It's the same company as this one, Stampenders. But then this one is on cling mount, and I'm thinking it's almost the same size. How come this one is cheaper than because these are usually more expensive? Just don't get this. And here is something fantastic, I think. It's a dreamy we were stencil, which you can just put on you just gotta place this on your paper, drag all over it with different kinds of texture pastes, acrylic paints perhaps. Or even some different kinds of paste from Dream Weaver itself. You just pull it on with a spatula, pull that stencil off, let it dry, or even heat set it if you are in a hurry. And just, you're going to get a marvellous print with the, both, co both the cogwheels and the clock and everything. I'm thinking this is going to be great fun. And I also learned that you could use this one in a big shot, for example. If you put this one there and you're going to use an embossing mat from Spellbinders, let's say, and you will going to get you are going to get a wonderful result really. So this could be fun to try out. And then when I'm in the mood of clocks and such and I was looking for a clock like this and it was a decoration and I saw that it was in metal and I was thinking perhaps I could make my own mold for that clock. But then I thought, well, it was pretty intricate, so I thought I'll just leave it. I also had a thought of actually making that metal clock into a stamp. But since I have learned to use these as stamps or even masks, I'm going to try it on this one instead. So when it comes to stamping, and I mean stamp stamping, I'm going to drag across some um, acrylic paint or perhaps spray on top. But what I'll do is I'll cover the other clocks so I could actually place just this one where I want it so I could make it look into a stamp, look like a stamp. So I'm hoping I'll be able to do that. And then I couldn't resist buying this silhouette thingy. This one says Mini Nancy Emily Polly. So there are three different figures and I'm going to pop these out so I'll be, make, I'll, I'll be able to make both the shadow effect as well as that top effect there and I'm thinking that perhaps you're going to 
put this one on a piece of pattern paper, cut it out and put it askew, sort of, and spraying the background with blacks or some something so you get a shadow effect there. Could be nice. And then I saw this mask or stencil and I couldn't resist buying it. And then this one is really fun. This is a bit, a bit bigger than the 6x6. Six six. This one is 6.5 by 7 inches actually. And the reason why I bought this was that I felt that the plastic was a little bit better uh, than the ones from the crafters workshop. Because they are more flimsy and uh, bendy, whilst this is a bit, bit stiffer and harder. And uh, this one is also a bit harder, so I'm thinking these will last a longer time. Or actually, well, be more, more durable. And this one is from Prima. And the thing, or the, or the thing that I do is that I actually spray this on a piece of paper. And then I take another piece of paper and put on top. So in that way I actually get two prints out of one at the same time, so it's a good thing. Nothing's going to go to waste. And then I couldn't resist buying myself some more washi tape. This one is from Prima, and this one has the letters A, B, C and such. It's glued down there, so I can't really move it. And then uh, I bought myself some honeycomb paper, and this is something that rocked my world when I saw Tim Holt use this. This is pretty big patterned honeycomb paper and what I'm going to do is that I'm going to trace a circle or something out of this and then I'm going to pull it out and I'm going to have some sort of an accordion looking thingy. So if I have a stamp for let's say this hot air balloon and I stamped this there just on the half and then I'm going to cut it out then I could actually pull it out glue it down on this one and I would get myself a nice fantastic card so more of that to come later I'm, from, uh, I'm sure so I bought it in black and white so that's basically it so those are my purchases and now I need to get crafting so Bye-bye. Hope to see you soon again.